Hi everybody, Dr. Pingle here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about how to build custom 3D models. Um, so you've done uh, perhaps some previous work um, using touch terrain or other um, services online that will let you generate um, three-dimensional models. Uh, what I wanted to do today was show you how you can um, customize and create models of your own um, using Art Pro. So uh, what we have here is a uh, model of Africa uh, that I built uh, about a year ago. Um, and we're looking at it here in um, Cura, uh, which is a software program um, that connects to a 3D printer. Uh, there are a lot of settings over here, so we don't need to worry too much about those. Um, but we can sort of treat this like a, you know, any kind of uh, three-dimensional model and, and look around uh, the build plate. So what you're, what you're seeing here is a, a mock-up of the 3D printer enclosure. Uh, and then you can see um, the terrain of Africa down below. So uh, how do we make this? Uh, well, we're going to get started uh, with uh, Art Pro. Um, so we've got a, a blank uh, project right here. Uh, we're going to create a new map. And we get something that looks like this. Uh, so the very first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to bring in some data. Um, now, uh, we're going to bring in uh, some data from uh, the cloud. Uh, what I'm looking for is terrain data, but I don't want anything that's going to be um, that's going to be uh, pre-symbolized. Um, so, in other words, I want the raw elevation values, um, and I want to and, and I, I want to work with those. Um, now, if you look for terrain, um, you can see that there are um, a few of these. Um, we could sort by names. We could just look at the terrain-based stuff. Um, so we can see we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, not all of these are published by Esri. So if you look, you see uh, a couple of other terrain layers that other people um, have uh, submitted. So we're just going to um, sort by owner so that we're really only looking at the Esri-based stuff. Uh, so that's going to show up here in the middle. Uh, and here we have three. So um, you can bring them all in here. So it's going to contact uh, the cloud server, uh, and it's going to bring these in. Uh, so this should just take a second, and I'll pause the video while those tile in. OK, so this is what's come in. Uh, and I've removed the uh, original base map, because we're not going to need that. Um, so we have this top one, which is just labeled terrain, uh, and has a uh, symbolization from negative 450 to 800, uh, sorry, 8,700 meters. Um, we have the second layer that has terrain, uh, and then terrain again, and then we have another one that's in a base map container um, labeled terrain. Um, so these are drawn in order, so we could just take a look at these. Um, this is the base map terrain layer. Um, so we've we've seen this before. Um, if you zoom in here, this is sort of a uh, probably a multi multi-directional hill shade with some additional styling, um, just intended to be a, a base map. Uh, the one on top uh, is essentially the same structure, um, so it really looks no different. Um, but this one looks quite a bit different. Um, so this um, is, is very much not uh, just a standard base map. Um, so the question is, which, which of these was it? Uh, well, this one, uh, the one that we uh, care about is actually uh, imagery. Um, so the other two are uh, a layer. Uh, and a layer uh, group or something. Um, but the one we want is, is just terrain, uh, and it was classified as an image. And if you want to verify that, um, we can go back in here, uh, looking for the data again. And the one that we want is this one, the imagery layer. Okay, so if everything works out, uh, you'll get something that looks like this. Now, we've done some other um, explorations of different visualizations of terrain. In this case, what we really want is just what we see here, uh, just the hypsometry. Now, we could print this tile um, and export a map of the world. It wouldn't be a very good map. Um, we're working with uh, what looks like uh, a Mercator or some variant of it right here. Um, so that's probably not going to look outstanding. Um, but we could we could go in here and we could make uh, any map of the world that we wanted. Um, so we could change our coordinate system uh, to something a little more uh, friendly. 
Uh, we could look at, uh, for instance, uh, a Patterson world projection if we wanted to, um, a nice rectangular, reasonably good uh, projection. Um, this would be a nice. Uh, this would be a nice start. Um, we could do uh, something a little bit more interesting uh, and uh, carve out um, like Robinson. In fact, let's let's go ahead and do that here. Um, whoops. There we go. All right, so we don't have to work with a rectangular projection. We could use something else. Um, we might want to print something like this out. Um, so how, how would we get this um, printed? Well, what we would need to do is uh, first we would create um, our layout. Uh, so we can do that. So we're just going to go up under insert and new layout. Uh, we have a wide variety of things here that we um, can pick from. Uh, this would draw it on essentially a, a regular sized piece of paper. Um, we could look at, at all of these other formats. Um, what I want to do is to find a custom page size. Uh, now, what we're, what we're essentially doing is drawing this on the canvas of the bed of a 3D printer. Um, so we want to scale our image to the size of that, um, of that print bed. Um, so I'm using a printer uh, that has a print bed of uh, nominally 280 millimeters, but it's actually 260 uh, fits on it pretty nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do is change this to centimeters uh, and then set this to 26 centimeters. All right, so this is going to create a 26 centimeter by 26 centimeter square layout. Uh, and what I need to do is add my map to it. So I'm going to go to, um, to map frame up here and just click on that. Uh, and we'll see it begin to populate with our, um, with our information. Uh, what I need to do next, the way that I'm going to make this work uh, is essentially I'm going to um, uh, use a, a nice quirk within the Cura software um, uh, that can turn a PNG, a portable network graphics file, into a 3D model. Um, so we know how to uh, export this as a model. Um, so I'm going to save my project here for just a second. Uh, we can go into uh, we can export this. All right, so we can export our layout, uh, and we can export this um, as whatever whatever we want. So I'm going to create a, a new folder here, uh, just a temp folder. Now the resolution, um, we can make whatever we, we want, essentially. Um, I'll often output this at 100 dpi, which is far, far lower uh, than what, we, what you're used to. But you can imagine um, that, a, that a 3D printer doesn't have the resolution of a normal, uh, a normal uh, laser printer. So, um, so 100 is, is more than enough. Um, so we're going to export that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is open Cura software. Now, if you don't have this, and, I, and there's really no good reason why you would, um, we can uh, just look for that. So you're going to look for Cura uh, Lulzbot download, and that's going to take you to this page. And you're going to download the most recent software. Um, so we have software for Windows, uh, which is what I recommend. Um, we've got software for uh, Mac, uh, which I have not used. Um, but once you download this, you can install it. The install goes pretty cleanly. Um, the main thing is that when you are um, creating this, uh, it's going to ask you which profile you want. Uh, and my recommendation is you use what, what I've been using, uh, which is the Lulzbot TAS 6. Right? And it looks something like this. Uh, so if you go to the library and, and look at the wall of printers, um, one of the things that you're likely to see is, is this. So essentially, we'll, I'll put a, a separate video for the install, uh, but we'll, um, so if you haven't installed the software, um, pause the video, uh, follow those instructions for the install if you need it, uh, and then come back. 
when you load up the software initially, uh, it may have uh, uh, sort of a, a starter um, starter shape on it, which is fine. Uh, they usually start you out with uh, this little guy called the Rocktopus. Um, but you can clear that off of the platform by going to File, New Project, uh, and it, this will let you clear the, the build plate. So you'll be back to sort of a, an empty canvas, if you will. Um, what I can do next is um, bring drag and drop uh, essentially the, um, the model that we just made uh, and put it right here. Uh, so we'll go back to our temp directory that we just made. Uh, and we can drag that straight on here uh, and you'll get something that looks like this. If you can't drag and drop it, which happens on some of the previous versions, you can always go to File and Open, which will get you to the same spot. Now these measurements are pretty important. Uh, the first uh, measurement is how high you want the model. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we're, we're scaling our model uh, right through this dialog box. So um, we're gonna set this to 15 millimeters for now. Um, uh, for now, we're gonna set the base to zero uh, and we're gonna set the width and the depth um, to the size of uh, our map that we made, uh, which is to 60 millimeters, 26 centimeters. You want to make sure that um, you set this to lighter is higher. Um, so what that's going to do is that's going to make um, any shapes that are lighter in color higher. Um, so if you look carefully here, you'll see uh, the Himalayan mountains, the Andes mountains, the Rocky mountains. Those are all light in color. We want those to be taller. So our convention is lighter is higher. Uh, and then you can adjust um, the amount of smoothing on here. Um, you can, uh, for now, why don't we leave that all the way to the left and we'll hit OK. All right. Um, now the job of the software is to slice, um, is to is to slice or sort of decide uh, how what what layers uh, this is going to be built in, and oftentimes this is kind of a bug of this particular version. If you move the um, if you start out, it's got the the model off of the build plate, so you just have to drag and drop it onto the build plate, and when you do, it should turn this uh, green color. Now there's a lot of things you can do here. Um, uh, one of the things that you can do uh, is you can uh, change the size. Um, so you can scale the model, make it larger or smaller. You can rotate the model. Um, you can create a mirror. You can copy things. Um, all I want to do at just this moment is to take a look at this. So if you look carefully at what we have here, uh, we have a world model. You can definitely see the, the continents. Uh, it's in a Robinson projection. Um, but you'll notice that we have uh, a couple of things um, have happened. Uh, so we have this uh, giant piece right here. We have this very big piece right here. Um, what it's done is, it, is it's looked for anywhere that's white in the image and it's made that the tallest point. Uh, so that's 15 millimeters. And it's made whatever is black the lowest point. Uh, and that's going to be set to uh, zero by default. So um, what we have is a, is a model that goes from zero at the corner here to 15 millimeters corresponding to essentially sea level and then the highest point uh, on our model which is white which would be the top of the Himalayas here but also the surrounding map frame. If we go back here um, what we exported was this giant piece. Uh, it had a border along it. It had some text right here and then it had the map on the inside. And again, the, the job of the, of the import uh, is to turn that into a 3D model. So anywhere that's white is gonna get scaled to the maximum that you specified in that dialog box, so 15 millimeters. And anywhere that's black is gonna be, um, uh, is gonna be the low side. Uh, and that's exactly what we have here. We have our border, we have some text down here, and then we have our sort of outside. So if we really want this to look good, um, we're gonna have to make an adjustment. Um, so Actually, it's, it's difficult to get rid of this text, but we're not going to need um, to worry about that because what we're going to do is going to make it go away anyway. We're going to need to get rid of this frame and we're going to need to get a solid black background uh, along the whole thing. Uh, so I'm going to delete, whoops, uh, I didn't want to do that. Control Z, bring this right back. There we go. Uh, what I really want to do is get rid of this uh, frame. Uh, and I can scale it as well while I'm here. So I could drag this out to the corners. And I could drag this out to the corners. Uh, and maybe I'm going to want to zoom in on this here uh, as well. 
Um, why don't we uh, why don't we leave this alone for just a second? So I'm going to Control Z back uh, to put it back where it was. Now, if I right click on this uh, and go to Properties, uh, I'll get this uh, dialog box that's going to look uh, pretty familiar. Um, we get something that looks like this. We have a name, map frame. Uh, we can look through the different options here. Uh, we have a scale of our map, so this is 1 to 161 million. Um, we can look on here. We've got a border, so that's right here. We have no background indicated by this um, uh, red slash through the box, and we have no shadowing. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is get rid of this border. Um, so I'm going to change this to no color, uh, and you'll see it change to this um, uh, box. Uh, and I'm going to move the background, instead of being transparent, I actually want this to be black. Um, if we export this as it is now, and just replace it. We can clear this off of the build plate. So we're going to do a new project. And we're going to open this file up just like we were looking before. Uh, we'll browse back to the directory that we saved it in. Again, these, these are very important. Uh, the higher we make this, the taller the model. So if we wanted to make this 30, for instance, that's going to make that model three centimeters tall. Uh, the base will leave at zero, and we want this width to be, again, this, about the size of the build plate. So in this case, it's 260. And we'll leave these two the way they were before, lighter is higher, and they're smoothing. We'll hit OK. So it's going to bring in that re-rendered map. Um, so all we've done is we've removed the frame, uh, and we've changed the background. And if we look at this, we now have a, a slightly different shape. That frame is gone. That whole The whole interior of the space is now um, uh, essentially at zero. You can see that flickering uh, as it's trying to draw something that isn't really there. Um, and we have this um, outer piece here that we would probably like to get rid of. So we're going to go back in. Uh, and how are we going to change the size of this? Uh, it's, it's actually pretty much the same way. Um, dialog boxes is, is pretty much the same, uh, just in a slightly different spot here. We're going to change this to a position of 0 uh, and a y of 0. Uh, and we're going to change this to 26 centimeters and 26 centimeters. All right, so now our whole map essentially fits across the, um, the size. Um, let's go ahead and re-render this back out. So I'm going to save this uh, and then export my map here. All right, so we're re-rendering this back out. And then the only change that we've made uh, is we've changed this uh, black background. Um, we've expanded the frame uh, all the way out here. So we're going to just load this again. Oh, we should have changed the size there. Um, that's OK. We'll, we'll do that real quick. So I just uh, clicked on it and clicked Delete, which is another way that you can do it. Uh, we're just going to change these to 260, and I'm going to set this back to 15. Okay. Um, so this starts to look a little bit more like uh, what we would expect. Uh, this is a rendering uh, of the world in a Robinson projection. We have um, a sort of flat uh, line going uh, we have this uh, sort of base uh, that is here. Um, we'll talk about why that showed up here in a second. And then the other thing which we might not want is this bunch of fluff. So what is what is all of this stuff? Uh, all of that is the text that you see here. So when we change the background to black, um, it, it automatically changed the text color to white. Uh, and so as a result, this is again the, the highest point uh, when Cura is running its conversion algorithm, it's going to look for any place that's white and it's going to make that uh, 20, uh, well, it's going to make it whatever the height is that we specified, so 15 millimeters in this case. So you can see that essentially what we have here is, is text that's about as tall as the Himalayas. And if we pull this open from the top and kind of zoom zoom in here, uh, whoops, move the model. Uh, the center mouse button will move the uh, perspective. 
Uh, I'm going to try really carefully to angle this just right. All right, well, it's pretty hard to see, uh, but you can sort of make out that these are probably letters. And they, the reason that they don't look um, perfectly good uh, is because that DPI is set rather low. Um, and um, whether you like it or not, some smoothing is gonna happen. Um, now we'd probably like that stuff to go away. Um, so we can clip that out of our uh, image set. Um, what we're gonna do is just put a, uh, a patch over the top of it so we can insert uh, just a rectangle. Uh, we'll just insert it right there. And we can change that to black. All right. And we can scale that a little bit more nicely so it doesn't go outside. All right, so we've essentially covered that text up um, we're going to re-render this one more time. We've got our original there. So that text is gone. It's been replaced by black. Black is being assigned a, a value or a height of zero. Uh, white is being assigned a value of uh, 15 millimeters uh, based on that dialog box that came in. And now we have a map of the earth uh, right here. Uh, topographically correct. Oops, gotta be careful about that. Topographically correct. <laughs> Keep hitting the wrong button there, you'll get used to it. Um, so you can see the, the Himalayas, uh, the Andes, the Rockies, uh, the Greenland ice sheet, which is probably a lot taller than you would, you would expect, uh, and uh, Antarctica. So um, how do we turn this into a 3D model that we can print? Well, if you've got a 3D printer connected to your computer right now, um, you could literally just hit print. Um, I don't have mine connected at the moment, um, and so my option right here, and probably yours as well, is gonna to be to save this to a file. Now the default save um, is gonna be a G-code file, um, which is what lets us, um, uh, it's the, the file that controls how the printer prints. Um, in our case though, uh, we wanna to save to one of these. Um, for 3D printing, um, the two most common standards are STL uh, and um, an OBJ or object file. Um, STL is a little bit more common, um, so I'm going to go ahead and save it here, uh, and we're going to save this as robinson 3 dmapstl Oops. Uh, looks like we've got some kind of a problem. Okay, so I've had to um, shut down the, uh, the program and just restart it again and then add my um, model back in here, the PNG file. Um, so we're gonna try this again, uh, saving this as a uh, binary STL file. And there we go. Um, so when in doubt, uh, restart the program uh, as usual. Okay, so we get a file that looks like this, robinson3dmap.stl. Um, now I'm gonna load that. Um, I'm gonna right click here. Uh, you can hit 3D print uh, if you have a, a printer. Uh, but what I wanna do is open with, I'm gonna open it with 3D Builder. Uh, so this is the default program. Um, you'll see that it um, asks for the file units. Um, it should be set to millimeters, but you can change that if you need to. Uh, I'll hit accept. Um, if you get a warning about repairing, don't, don't bother. We're just gonna be looking at this here for a second. Um, so if you look at the model, um, you get something that's uh, realistic. Uh, you can look and see, uh, uh, again, here are the Himalayas and the Andes and the Rockies, uh, the ice sheet, and you can kind of pan and zoom around. Um, now, you may, you may notice that there's kind of a bit of a jagged appearance. Um, you can increase the look of that by changing the output resolution 
Um, but you're only going to be able to change it um, to to some degree, but not get rid of it fully. Um, but when you go to print this, it's going to look a lot better um, than it looks here. Um, so if it, if it looks a little bit jagged and it looks a little bit uneven, um, it'll look a little bit better when it prints. So um, that's a, a quick introduction to how you get started. Um, in the next video, uh, we'll get into some more of the um, details that you can use um, to make some things look a little bit uh, better. So thanks for listening.